Here we go. Okay, drop the needle, Tony. I'm dropping the needle. It's going down. There it goes. Oh, so close. God, and yes, so, so far. So close. Wow, it seems like yesterday. It is like yesterday. And a lot of Although it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this song was um, the, the only song that we didn't write on the album, and uh, it was written by uh, Tom Robinson. And Peter Gabriel. And Peter Gabriel. Yeah, two fine writers. Two fine writers, and uh, Peter Gabriel is probably uh, one of my biggest heroes in the world. And uh, the record company um, that we were with at the time, we got this record deal through, uh, through uh, Norm Corbett and uh, William Ten and Frank Davies, who got us the deal with yep. Solid Gold Records. And uh, they loved the album. They said, we need a single. We need a, a single that is, <laughs> is not on the album yet. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So um, much to our chagrin at the time, we, uh, they, they played us this and we liked the song and we just all we wanted to do was original music. And, uh, but we, we uh, agreed to, to record this after we'd recorded the rest of the album. And uh, we and, went, yeah. yeah. It proved to be a blast. It was really fun, In the end. yeah. You and, know, all, all the sort of thoughts of like, you know, like doing someone else's work. Number one, it's, a, it's actually a cool song. It's kind of, the original version is pretty dark. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we just had a ton of fun recording it. You know, we, just, yeah. we decided, you know, let, let's have a blast in the process rather than sort of, uh, you know, feeling funny about it. So mm -hmm. we did. I would, I would be curious to see how, what uh, Tom Robinson and Peter Gabriel thought of our version. Probably I have this vision of, of Tom Robinson coming and saying, you've ruined our song. <laughs> yes. I have this vision of them, like, enjoying the royalties for years and years. Yeah, enjoying the royalties, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was a blast doing it. Yeah, we switched. We did studio. it at Eastern Sound. Eastern Sound, okay. Eastern yeah. Sound, yeah. It was in Yorkville at the time on on Yorkville, and uh, with Eugene Martinick, he uh, helped produce it. You are, we brought Jorn Anderson in on drums. Yep. Uh, Howard A on bass, and uh, Dave McMorrow on keyboards. Yep. And we played all, all fine the guitars. Musicians. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, I think I played the strings on the piano there too. Yeah, you did some yeah. sort of thing, and yeah. Yeah, Dennis Akiyama was uh, on trumpet on it. He's yeah, coming up any moment. Coming up any moment. Yeah. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> and, awesome uh, player. And yeah, guy. it was really fun. Yeah. Very fun. It was a bit of a whirlwind as well. I mean, we were sort of like you know rushing along, you know, uh, trying to get the whole thing finished and uh, doing a lot of gigging as well at the time because we'd been playing a lot all over the city and yeah. outside, you know. Uh, because the live band thing was really important to us at the time. So. Yeah, we were playing like uh, the Turning Point on Bloor Street. Our first gig. Our first gig at the Turning Point, where we coined the name of the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which Tony yeah. got a uh, <laughs> a letter from his uh, grandfather who'd been over and we'd been in England and visited him. God bless him. And uh, and he wrote. <laughs> Tony told him he was playing music for a living, and and his grandfather he was from very you know from you know he said we was in the Punjab and what yeah, he was in India in India in India in the early 20th century he wrote a letter to Tony and said uh, dear Tony it's wonderful that you're playing music but don't fool around with any little bands get yourself into a paka orchestra <laughs> yeah. and, which for him was like a taste and kind of style of orchestra sort of decision rather than a, a you know. pucka meaning <laughs> top notch yeah top notch yeah so. and as soon as we as soon as we read the letter we all kind of like looked at each other and was like this is the perfect name it's the perfect you know, name because it has band. nothing to do with, with his intention but at the same time in terms of how we felt about the band creatively i mean i think for all of us it was a an, a, a magical time that the three of us had been thrown together I'll be honest with you, Dee. I didn't even know. I didn't know that there was vinyl at the top. <laughs> I, seriously, right. I was under this impression that 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 this was going to be the first domestic release for Virgin in Canada on CD only. That was CD and tape only. That they were not going to do vinyl. And this is kind of weird that this actually exists. It was coming to the end of our first huge tour of America, and we needed a new single. And this was a song that I had written when I lived in Liverpool in a little bed sit kind of, and I had the the riff. So I I did a little demo and I took it to Mike Howlett, who was our producer. 